this is Chrissy Carlson Romano. You know me as the voice of Kim Possible and on Even Steven. And I never, ever, ever listen to the GNT show. GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Star Trek, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continuing mission, to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to boldly go where no show has gone before. Naomi, Naomi Wildman. I was setting it up. Oh. Welcome to the GNT show, where obviously we have no script. Yeah, let's just get this puppy started. As always, the beautiful, the lovely, the high-booted, short-skirted, and big-breasted Terry Lynn. <laughs> that would be me. Admiral Shaw. Badass. It's Serenium <laughs> Cup. <Yeah. Bah. laughs> Good morning. It's Sunday on the GNT show. <laughs> you know the worst part of this morning? It's not the getting up early. It's the fact they're making me wear clothes to do the show. It's time for coffee class. <laughs> Strap on your helmets, boys and girls. It's going to get rough. Oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Let me put on my seatbelt, my helmet, with a little blinky light on top. For safety. Well, we decided. <laughs> we were going to do the GNT show. Man. One of the things we said was no standards. GNT show does not go on the air because we're ready. It goes on the air because it's nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Mike could have snapped by then and killed us both. Pain sticks for Mike, evidently. <laughs> we have our production meetings on the air. Well, it's the best way to get you to adhere to things. Yeah, you've now set an expectation. Oh, I That's the thing about disclaimer. the GNT show is we set no expectations. I need more coffee. Wow. This... I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to do general news or Star Trek news, and I figured. This is Terry having. A series of small it's strokes, news. actually. Well, it doesn't take long for this show to, to deteriorate, <laughs> does it? Straight the fuck downhill. <laughs> I don't always podcast, but when I do, I GNT. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the GNT Show, episode 167. I'm Terry Lynn. Joel on True. This is Gettysburg 7, also known as Nick. There she is to my left, your right. Uh, look, wearing her hospital yeah. gown because she sounds like she's just totally out of it today, Terry Lynn. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. And to my right, your left, in this it's the holiday decorated studio, there he is, dressed as a Klingon pilgrim, Ceridium. Kapla. <laughs> Yes, and we have been redecorating like for the last week and a half. I like it. I like it. I, and you don't I think, think the turkey, the, the turkey with think... the bat list is nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that that was fun. Um, just wait until I until you see the the animatronic Santa Claus. Oh, oh, dear God! Funny. And it is my extreme pleasure to introduce someone whose work we have talked about quite often on this show, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Una McCormick. Hello, hi, good to be here. We are Welcome. so excited that you can join us. I know that we only have a little bit of time. And Steve, is Steve in the room? I'm here. Yay! Right. Also known as Cop Liver, show. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I know Nick would have glanced over him if he was. I, I didn't know that Steve was in. I didn't see oh, that. You didn't. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. Steve, I did not. And to my left, your right, there he is. Steve. Hello, Steve. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Midnight Shadow is our UK correspondent and just an amazing addition to the team. And we no, were very appreciative. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> And I have to admit, the, uh, the the little tete-a-tetes that he has with Nick every so often are very fun. So uh, now, should we be calling you? Do you mind if we call you Una? Una's fine. Of excellent, course it's fine. Excellent. Absolutely fine. All right. Perfect. Yeah. For, for, it can, I can't even imagine that any of our listeners won't know who you are. But there might be two or three people who do not understand why we love your book so much. Oh. <laughs> and, and I'll just come right out and say it. Um, Una is the one Star Trek author who I think everybody agrees truly understands Garrick inside and out. Oh, Lord. It's a, uh, yeah. Imagine that being the thing that people would um, put on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't understand. Garrick is, of all of Star Trek, Garrick is my favorite character. So. I do. <laughs> He's my favorite DS9 character. Absolutely. My- There's something about him, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 well, I already told everybody. I said the, the reason why I love Garrett so much is because even though you don't truly realize it when you're watching the show, he's the most honest character on the show. He is in a strange way. I think I think uh-huh. possibly Quark is the, uh, the is the other honest one. You know, Quark's uh-huh. there to make money out of you, and uh, it's quite upfront. But he's Quark's also loyal and kind and loves True. his brother. 
Um, but but Garrick's pretty frank, you know. I'm I'm here to do whatever I can for Cardassia, up to and including genocide. So uh, he's pretty <laughs> he's pretty open about that in many ways. And if you trust him, uh, you're a, you're a bit of an idiot, I think. Um, so uh, yeah, he is in an odd way quite uh, quite honest, or he's quite if not honest, he's at least consistent. And so you're able to uh, predict what he can do, I think. Yeah. So uh, so he's yeah. There's there's not really a code or rules, but there's a there's a consistency to his actions. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I really appreciate that. And now, well, has everybody, uh, I mean, has everybody pretty much read through the fall if they haven't been? Shame on you if you haven't. We pushed, we, we've been talking oh, about let's that since spoil it came them. out. Spoil them if they've not read Excellent. Excellent. Pity free. We're Cardassian here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, like you know it. what? I wish that uh, Alessa was here. Oh, I know, I know. She'll, she'll, she'll hear it. She'll hear. Yeah. It. Um. Well, with Garrick's unusual and new position in the Cardassian world, <laughs> uh, that's gonna. Do you think that'll uh, straighten him up and a little bit? What, Are you kidding? Po- He's perfect politician. Being a politician <laughs> will straighten him up. I think that's uh, <laughs> that's very. Um, <laughs> That's a very charming idea of politicians. I think um, I think it will uh, the uh, the kind of Cardassia that he wants to create uh, or take a part in creating. I think is what's uh, going to try and keep him on the straight and narrow. Yeah. He's setting you know, rules and uh, checks and balances around him that will prevent him from going as far as he possibly can, or um, putting people around him who will tell him that he's going too far. Um, so so that was my idea that he'd kind of um, the way I always think of Garrick. He's he's the he's the the ultimate survivor yeah. and um uh he will he will not go so far as to destroy himself and i mean that sort of both morally as well as physically and so this is this is garrick surviving again it's uh it's garrick regenerating it's garrick saying well i i want to live and i want cardassia to, to survive so what do i have to do i have to stop murdering <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we have to stop murdering and um and he's taking that very seriously at least that's that's how i read him yeah is there a particular modern day um country that you may have taken inspiration from in writing oh, I, Cardassia? Absolutely. I think um, uh, certainly we're being pointed in the show to think of uh, uh, the Dominion War as uh, a, a version, not identical, obviously, but a version of World War II and the Cardassians as, um, as Nazis. So certainly I've got mm-hmm. uh, Germany in mind. Uh, and um, although also... Casey oh, mm-hmm. excellent. <laughs> well done, Casey. <laughs> um, also, if I uh, dare say, a lot of um, what I wrote about Cardassia in Neverending Sacrifice was actually as a result of um, uh, my year's stay in America, which is a, a geographically a very different um, country, not uh, from Britain. I don't mean obviously the size, but the kind of layout of cities and the organization of cities and um, oh, those yeah. kinds of spaces. So uh, I, the city I live in uh, wasn't built for cars. Uh, you know, it's it's a pain in the neck getting a, a car around Cambridge. Um, but American cities are very, very difficult, particularly as you go further out west. They're obviously built. They exist because of trains. They exist because right. of um, of cars. So geographically or um, uh, those kinds of spaces, I imagined much more like America. And of course, uh, America is the great imperial power in the world at the moment. So um, Never Ending Sacrifice is a, is a book about empire uh, and um, what happens to empires as they start to decline. Uh, and so a, a little bit of the United States in mind as well but chiefly I think that the show is directing us to think of the Cardassians as uh, uh, Germany under the Nazis mm-hmm. and certainly in Crimson Shadow uh, yeah. uh, I was thinking about the processes of Nazification uh, throughout the later 40s um, during the 50s so um, yeah it's a it's a curious hybrid of um, uh, United States and European countries um, so uh, but you uh, uh, the, the great thing about being a science fiction writer is you can pick and choose so you're, you're not wedded to um, right. any particular place which saves on research which I, I am very big on saving on research a great believer in just making something up so we're right on <laughs> absolutely not interested in being in libraries i'm interested in um, imagining stuff so, uh, oh, so that's where that. cardassia fits in my mind i think although little bits of um, crimson Star- shadow starts in um there's a little bit set around a, a, a sort of urban working class area and i actually have belfast in mind where relatives of mine have lived for a while so that kind of powder keg of a city um that's also in, in my mind as i say you pick and choose that that is really really cool um and it does come through uh your writing it does come through Thank it you. gives me it gives me a, a great comprehension of which is why for um for 
all of the, the different kinds of Star Trek books that are out there, I really have I really have been drawn to not just the Titan books, just because I love them so much because of the diversity and the, the kind yep. of head to head stuff that they get to do on that. But also through the DS9 and the post in the fall has just been, you know, when I very first started reading Star Trek books, I, here's a question for you. Do you get that a lot? Do you get a lot of people who are who are like, oh, it's not a Star Trek book if it involves politics? Um, I've had that a couple of times, um, which I, I, I don't quite understand. I, I can see, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Space Nine was was all about the politics. It was just, you know, it was, it was lots of people sitting around scheming, as far as I can make out, from uh, Kai Wynn, you know, upwards right. or downwards. Um, it, it was all about uh, the politics. It's all about the politics of Asia, the um, relationships in Beijing and the Federation, which is very strained. Obviously, the strained relationship with Cardassia uh, and uh, the the Federation trying to mediate um, that situation. So, and then uh, you know, the, 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 the what happens when politics or diplomacy breaks down. Which is which is war, and um, you know the whole the whole end of it. I, I do understand why people say Deep Space Nine isn't that utopian vision. It isn't um, it isn't that exploratory uh, show that we that we love and remember. Um, but uh, I I think these uh, I think these messages are there. In um, I rewatched Measure of a Man the other day. It isn't about oh. politics, but it's, yeah. it's adversarial. Um, and also, you know, in the original show, there are there are reflections on um, mm-hmm. Vietnam and this kind of mm-hmm. them. It's using science fiction as a, an allegorical mode, um, and it's just more explicit in Deep Space. It's the kind of thing that floats my boat, so um, it, that's the the aspect of the show that I like writing about. It's like having a kaleidoscope, isn't it? The the universe is so big now that you just twist the kaleidoscope and, and bracket that universe through the lens that, that interests you most. Big universe, I think. Plenty of room to play. I think I get more complaints about being British. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, Wait, but right, okay. right? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, I've I've had a couple of reviews that say no, that these shows should sound American, and you know, tonally her inflection is too British, uh, which I don't mind. Again, big universe, and if it doesn't work for someone, it doesn't work, and um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm sorry they've not enjoyed the book more than anything. Yeah. Well, yeah. we had spoken uh, with some of your uh, co- uh, co-authors on the fall. Oh, conspirators. Um, that's, <laughs> a good, that's a good word. Yes. Um, what was the process of working with them like from your perspective? I mean, we've heard it, what they what they said about you, but I, you know, <laughs> before I just realized we have now had every author from the fall on. We, yes, we have. We have. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I was a, I was a bit delayed, wasn't I? I was I was busy with uh, I, think I was well, busy. You were having a baby. Yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, <good reason>. yeah, <laughs> yeah just, you kind know. of preoccupied, but you know these things happen. Um, well, my ears burned a lot, so that was absolutely great. I may I may have listened to that a couple of times. Um, they were brilliant. Uh, what I say about not liking doing research very much um, means that these guys absolutely had my back. They're, there's nothing that they don't know about Star Trek, uh, which is pretty awe-inspiring. So all, all the little gaps in my kind of uh, knowledge and information, um, uh, they, they completely had my back on that. And it was it was a hoot. I'd, I'd obviously, I knew Jim quite well because we're both here in Britain and we've, uh, we've worked in similar, you know, we've done a bit of Doctor Who and worked for Big mm-hmm. Finish and that kind of thing. Um, but the other guys I, I hadn't really worked with uh, at all, just a few kind of um, pleasant email exchanges and so on. And, um, and they're great. They're an absolute hoot. And you know, we, we had all these emails bouncing around and there was a spreadsheet with, with all our stuff plotted out because it's it takes place over such a short period of time. And somebody drew up one of those and then we were bouncing ideas around and really having to f- make this plot fit. So it's quite a quite, I mean, it's hard enough fitting the plot together in your own book, never mind kind Kind of, um, you know, trying to do this across five. Um, David, our George, and I had to uh, work together quite closely because there's, there's an overlap of several days. I think the first third of my book overlaps with his book, so there were where there were bits where we were going, well, you know, would, would they have been able to get to Bajor in time, or do we have enough space? Is there actually enough hours in the Bajoran day? And having to cut uh, and change your story on the fly, uh, which I find quite invigorating. It's like, you know, I'm um, rolling the dice and having to, uh, you know, change everything around again. So uh, really, really really good fun and they said very nice things about me so obviously i think they're marvelous <laughs> <laughs> right on right on well yeah. except for date you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll forgive him it's all right <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, we've talked about Deep Space Nine. Now, um, later next month, you've actually got a new book out. I do, yes. Uh, I'm not quite sure when I wrote it, um, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, Space it got written can... and it's getting published, which is slightly... I, I, mean, I was writing it when my little girl was about... Uh, well, she was she was born in, in the middle of November, and I think I started it in January. Um, I've got an advice for anyone planning to write a novel with a, with a two-and-a-half, three-month baby, and that's don't... <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't do it it's absolutely insane a uh, crazy thing to do so yes that's due out um I, I I'm, it's a little hazy uh end of december i think it's something like yeah, it, it, it due for yeah. at least 30th of december yeah yeah kind of sneak it under the wire so that, that that's a, a mad thing i've done this year is write and publish a novel so um i don't know um i, I imagine it will start uh shipping from amazon maybe a week in advance or something like that so, what is it called i don't remember it, catching the name it's called the missing the missing it's the missing yep and it's uh, set on deep space nine uh and it foregrounds uh Ro Laren and uh, beverly crusher and a character that i have longed to write for which is catherine pulaski uh yeah you got, you got us all extremely happy it's oh, terry I sweet pulaski. as you heard i love pulaski absolutely I love, love her a bit I know it's. I know she gets a lot of shtick, but I think she's hilarious. I th- I'd like to be like her when I grow up, kind of a bit. Me too. Yeah, a bit. This show and... is very Blasky friendly. We're we one are of very places that we is. Adore her. Oh, I'm really yeah, pleased about allowed, that. Yeah, you're not allowed to. We ignore comments who 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 diss Pulaski. I'm sorry, oh, I just don't even listen to it. They're, they're deluded. <laughs> I mean, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And then the other character in it is a, a character from one of my earlier books, um, uh, my book Brinkmanship, which had a Zenkethi character in it um, oh. and I won't, I won't I won't spoil her story but she's now in Federation space uh, and she comes back and is uh, quite a significant character in the book so, uh, so I hope people enjoy it it's a little bit of murder mystery uh, there's a, a new alien species too and um, yeah it's a it's that's a, so cool I well, think so I, I can't so remember cool. writing can't it so I have no yeah, idea yeah. what's in it <laughs> well I think we're all excited to to get our hands on it when it comes out next month so Good. thank you very much I'm assuming I mean, it's available for pre-order now through all the typical. I yeah, I've so. already pre-ordered yeah. it via Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, should great. Be, uh, yeah, because it's not long now. It's about uh, about four or five weeks away. Weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you should be able to guess it. So yes. Oh God, that means Christmas is off. almost here. I know. I know. I know. <sighs> Don't even. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Well, it I hope some... you enjoy it when it comes out. Oh, now, we will. Trust me. Terry, do we want to do the questions for her real quick? Yes, because the I know we to get going. I want to get them in. Okay, I won't do them all. Uh, these are questions that we based on uh, questions that James Lipton does on a show here called uh, Inside the Actor's Studio. Okay. So, uh, they may seem battles, but they build up to, to a really good one at the end that usually gets us cursed at. Although, <laughs> you seem too nice for that. Oh, I'm absolutely uh, potty mouth. Oh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Okay, the first is, what is your favorite Trek series? Oh, Deep Space Nine. Of course. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, it's, you... it's Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I like Enterprise. I do well, like Enterprise. I like Deep Space Nine more. Favorite. Yes. <laughs> Deep Space Nine's my favorite, but Enterprise, I thought seasons three and four were fantastic. It's grown on me. Yeah, it's still my, it'll be my second Like favorite. Moss, it's grown on you. <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> now, do you like Enterprise better than Voyager? Uh, no. <laughs> you have to think about it, though. <laughs> All right. Um, this one. If, if, if we don't get the answer for this one, then I think we're going to get something. If you could be any species in Trek other than human, which species would you be? Oh, I'd be uh, I'd be part of the Q continuum. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's the first yeah. time we got there. You that. go there. <laughs> Good God, I don't want to be Cardassian. No, that's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> brutal. That's, a, that's the first time we've gotten Q. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why would you not want omnipotence and kind no of kidding, you know, right? yeah, just you know, it's jaunt around the job. universe having a Someone's great time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, I, th- I practically say, think I'm godlike in my own mind, so you know it wouldn't be. Uh... <laughs> I have to say, I, I think I would end up a lot like Q, and that is, you know, bored out of his mind. <laughs> yeah, to, to, so I suspect so. But I'd have time to do everything. I think, and um, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. If you were given the opportunity to write an open-ended series based on one character in Star Trek, who would it be? Oh well, I, I'm going to be obvious there, uh, uh, Garrick. So, uh, but but. but with a kind of rolling cast of, uh, I've not had a chance to put Garrick and Pulaski together, for example. So, oh uh, my God, so that would be. I'm uh, sorry, I that, just got 
get all jittery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Garrick and Picard was fun enough. I'd like them to do a sort of. I'd like to have them as kind of the the leads in a series. That would be uh, that would be brilliant. Garrick and Picard with occasional Pulaski appearances. That would be uh, be pretty good fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would excited. be really cool. Somebody give me uh, some money. <laughs> we must make this happen, folks. Uh, people in the chat room are pre-ordering it as we speak. <laughs> Thank you, chat room. Awesome. Hey, we love you, chat room. <laughs> They're also posting pictures of Garrick in a dozen different different styles, but it's awesome. Now, Fantastic. what is the name of your starship, the USS? Oh, the USS Verity, which is All my right. daughter's name. So. Oh. oh, right on. Oh, there you go, softy. <laughs> oh, look at oh. the studio audience. I'll go, oh. <laughs> in 20 seconds, at least, they will. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite adjective? Do you overuse it? And then is there an adjective you loathe? Oh, oh goodness. God, what good questions. Um, uh, adjective that I overuse. Uh, oh, I don't know if it counts as a... I probably do a, a bit, so something's a, a bit crazy, a bit mad, and then I have to go through and, and cut it all the time. Um, but it's, I know, it's not quite an adjective. But it, it modifies a noun. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> and an, an adjective that I loathe. Oh, I'm I'm not a creature of hatred. I I, I could clasp any adjective to my bosom if uh, <laughs> pressed hard enough. I think. <laughs> Next. Okay. And I'll go to the to the final one since we're running out of time with you. If you were given the green light to kill a major Star Trek canon character, which character would you pick? Oh, and it has and this is a death that will stick. It's no, yes. nobody stick. gets to come back magically. It's a death that stays. Oh dear me! Right. Okay. Let me. No think. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, Riker, so long as I can do it. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> Although he's 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 quite, I've been rewatching a lot a lot of Next Gen. I I, can't, I just I hadn't watched it for a, a while, and I, you're watching Riker, and I go, I just can't believe these character exists. <laughs> I think when a friend sent me a link to a video on YouTube of him climbing over chairs to sit down, yes. that was, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the Riker yeah, maneuver. The Riker maneuver. The Riker yeah. maneuver, yeah. How had I not seen this and how can I unsee it? Um, <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so does that but mean you've it, got some it, ideas on how you want to kill him? Oh, slowly. <laughs> <laughs> It's so unfair. I, I mean, Jonathan Frakes is. It, what's really, really funny is it, it, it. The performance is so good, and that's why Riker is so awful. Um, but uh, I, I, it's that he's a he's a. Oh, it's it's quite difficult to watch. I think I think Riker has not dated well. So, um, but then you yeah, part of the pleasure of watching it is um is it, if he wasn't there, you'd miss him, wouldn't you? So it's a. Uh, who else would I kill? Oh, uh, Neelix or something. I don't know. All... <laughs> now being. These, these are all nine. cheap shots, I think, aren't they? Or, or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, R- yeah. Know, Riker right would have so some great. That's so great. Impact. Yeah, but it, but it, more it for personal reasons. Now. Yeah, and, and then keep everybody good. Like well, Troy. especially considering that at now in the novel universe, he's yeah. an admiral. I mean, yeah. that's kind of a big deal. Yep. Yeah. Oh, very good point. Actually, you heard it here first, Paul. <laughs> That's okay, we, that would open we absolutely up. can't do that now, can we? Because you, it's kind of come chasing after us, going, "Hey, that was that was my idea." So. No, that's fine. <laughs> You're not that the opens first up the, the, the Titan series for my favorite track lit character. Ah, yeah. Christine Good Christine point. Bell is uh, oh, I love her. <laughs> yeah, more female leads. That's what we want. I agree. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Clear out the top ranks. <laughs> what do you think of Esri? What do I think of Esri? I really like Esri. I really um, identify with Esri. Uh, I'm so in um, love with this woman. You have no idea. Yeah, right now. <laughs> how, how much in love I am with her. We would all, I mean, you know, we would love to be a kind of Jadzia, but really, yes. we're we're all we're all Esri, aren't we? We're all a bit, you know. Oh, things are happening to me, and I don't quite understand it, and I'm very confused, and my hands are waving around, and um, <laughs> that's exactly what I would be if somebody, you know, completely altered my life in the way that happened. So, uh, exactly. I'd, I'd, I'd definitely be Esri. So I feel a great deal of sympathy. Also, I'm quite small and have short hair. So uh, we are oh. practically indistinguishable. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
I yeah, I, no, I really like Esri, and uh, I, I think she gets that. She gets a bit of confidence. Um, uh, uh, she becomes a little bit more interesting. So, uh, well, yeah. she's interesting anyway. Well, and, and imagine having to come onto that show with, uh, you know, Terry Farrell leaving and um, having to take that part and run with that. No I think kidding. she does a great job. Yeah, really good yeah. job. Well, I, I, we know that you uh, you have to run. We thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us this morning, oh, this it's afternoon. A, an absolute ball. <laughs> A real pleasure, and um, um, it's just uh, where I, uh, uh, listeners might not know. I, I teach at a university. I teach writing. We are bang in the middle of term at the moment, and it's things are just sort of extremely hectic. But um, uh, get me back on in the summer, and we'll we'll do a do a much longer time, and that will be uh, that'll be really good fun. Um, we will so have a blast. We'll I look we'll right forward to that very very much. Again, everybody, uh, Una McCormick, author of many Star Trek novels and upcoming Star Trek: Deep Space Nine: The Missing, coming out in December. Thank you very much indeed, guys. Take care. Ladies and Bye-bye. gentlemen, the wonderful Una McCormick. Give it Thank a you. <laughs> cheerio, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye. And we you. Got a Bye-bye. <laughs> and a fly me. You've got a fly me as well. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a great rest of the show. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah. Oh, what a Thank sweetheart. That was, that awesome. was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. No Thank worries. you, Steve. Are you going to stick with us for the show? I can do indeed. Awesome. Now, Steve, the, the restraining order that she has against you doesn't go for over internet then i guess no no good (laughs) (laughs) i hope i hope uh, james swallow takes one out here soon i think for me uh, Swallow, you've been one up by Una. She falls in your court, my friend. <laughs> um, well, shall we start with a little coffee clutch? Yeah, uh, uh, so, uh, wait, 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 son, what are you saying? Oh, uh, wait, wait. She's, she, she's saying Adrian just died. Because of the accents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I was about to start panicking here. I was about to start panicking here. I was like, what? What? (laughs) Sensei would not break that kind of news to us in the chat. No, she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. Right, Sensei? (laughs) I've got Skype closed. She couldn't break it to me any other way if she had to. Oh, okay. So she could call me. That's right, (laughs) Sensei. Oops, did I give that away? Oh, I want to give Mike some uh, some uh, some major kudos for uh, like less than 24 hours after I got him the uh, the supplemental logs from Great Allentown Comic Con. There they were posted. Yeah. Oh, you guys haven't seen shit yet. <laughs> oh, you know what, Mike? Don't don't get don't don't get cocky. <laughs> oh well, I'm I'm just saying I have something that you guys have not seen yet. <gasps> oh dear God, that can't be unseen. <laughs> <laughs> There's the link in the chat room. I'm gonna look. look. Okay. Looks pretty good. Oh, it's my computer. Beautiful. This is in an ideal oh. world what I wish to build for the TNT show. Mike, this is nice. Make so, it so. Yes. Yeah. Contribute to the GoFundMe. Make it happen. That. But nice. anyways. Um, okay. Yeah. So I've been working on that, and I also not only uh, not only did I release those two interviews uh, from Allentown. But we also recorded an interview with Enterprise in Space this week. Yeah. Oh God, that Wasn't was that cool? so amazing. That was like awesome, so awesome. I mean, I'm still trying to process it. I mean, there was just so, so, it was so dense really with information over my smart, head. Really was, smart people. These were oh yeah. Smart, funny, wonderful, geeky. You know. And huge ups to Larry Nemechek for getting us uh, all of them in the room at the same time, which had never it been was done the, before. Yeah, it was the first time that many of them were together. We had like four of them, didn't we? Yeah. Five if you count Larry. Five if you count Larry. Yeah. (laughs) It was a very cool studio. And Larry wouldn't stop sitting on my lap, which was kind of uncomfortable, and yet not. It was like those phone booths at college campuses, you know, during rush week when you try to cram like 12 bottles. Yeah. Whoa, what? what? Who just lost their nose? Was that who blew blowing their nose? Me, I'm sorry. Oh, you have a little cold going, Terry? No, it's just early morning. I'm oh, oh, Terry, sorry, I, thought so I, I thought I muted the mic fast enough. I apologize. And I also got, uh, now, here's a little bit of arrogance, so please, uh, I apologize. I From a Klingon shock. But <laughs> I had put together, I've started putting together an author page for myself. Yay! That's not arrogance. No, that's, that's you should. Marketing, um, dude. I've got a cu- I've got a couple of so of old stories up 
a couple of news stories up. Um, I even have a blog explaining uh, the process that we had undertaken to create the Gates of Stove, of course, Starfinder crossover special. Oh, which reminds me, uh, Star, uh, Gates of Stove, of course, new episode, Messages yeah. from the Outback, part one, is now available. Um, so check that out. Um, I'll get the link in the chat room in a second. This is really neat. So beautifully uh, done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's Worked kind of like a, what the Enterprise in Space uh, chat room was like, or not chat room, but just the studio. That's kind of how it was. And that was Larry right there, whose kind of rear end was sticking out of the top of the phone booth. <laughs> now I want to. I want to. I I know it's the the holiday season, and we've got our our GoFundMe thing going on and all of that. But I want to thank Gigi Edgeley for sitting down with me for almost a half an hour, just just short of a half an hour, at downtown Comic Con and uh, discussing her career and also the Kickstarter that she's a part of for the the film hashtag that they're they're trying to get made. Um, did, she, this, does Gigi still do? Um, I didn't get a chance to listen in, although I'm not sure she would have mentioned it. But she, does she still do a um, a comic book? We do discuss that. Yes. Okay. Good. We do discuss that. Well, because it was perfect for being at a comic con. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, she does, okay. and uh, it, it's it's a really good interview. But I put the link for the Kickstarter for hashtag. It's a very cool project that yeah. she's involved in. It um, looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's uh, if you haven't listened to the interview, please do. She described it far better than I ever can, and she's so excited about it. And she's oh, she's just such a sweetie. Uh, you know, the the people that I interviewed at the Allen. Comic Con, her and Erica were just the most down to earth people. Neat. And uh, I've got some others, Mike, that I'm, I'm in contact with that we're trying to set up probably in the new year. Right on. Uh, I, I think we're pretty much booked between yeah. now and until March. the first week of, well, the first week of <laughs> First of week January. of July, right? Through July 4th. We're, 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 we're. <laughs> first week of, of January. So yeah. um, anything, after, say, the 7th onward, although I think we need to schedule the book club for the seventh but you know anyways we'll talk more about it later <laughs> that's cool it was grimmy he's gone grimmy was here yeah no he's gone oh, i'm sorry grumpkin's back we have to figure out who grumpkin is i is thought grumpkin at first Kush? it might be grimmy but is it kush would it be kush that's kind of cute I, I think grimmy is uh well, grimmy is grimmy. Overseas. we know who grimmy is grumpkin no, Grim, excuse me grimm is we don't in know california who grumpkin is. grimm is in california right right i think grumpkin's Grim. in, in grumpkin. england or in europe somewhere i'm loving this this is great i love the fact that you guys are like why do you think that might something that was said in the chat room early this morning i think it was before we even started the show but anyways about time difference <laughs> what was said mike i don't no. remember i'd have to go back through the chat to find out is grumpkin is it swallow are you grumpkin <laughs> nope not cushman <laughs> Uh, There's Grimmy. There's Grimmy. Grim. Oh my we God! Hey, you, brother. Grimmy? I know. I, I need a hug. I need a Grimmy uh, hug. I know. You know. And Grim. Uh, we we could talk Grim all day. All day. I love it I when know. Grim is overtired and his. <laughs> by the way, if orange was blue, it would taste like purple. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> you didn't see his posting when he was overtired. <laughs> Could be misdirection. I don't swallow or spit. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking I'm falling in love with Grumpkin. <laughs> it might be Alessa. <laughs> so, Steve, what have you been up to this week? A lot of work. Um, the IT manager's been off, so I've been doing oh. his role and mine. Um, oh. So, <laughs> I've been getting home late so most this week. And I've still got to do work this weekend because I've got to put together a big proposal for security measures um, for our company. So, <laughs> cool. but uh, um, yeah, amongst that, I've been quickly getting in to play some stove, just doing my dailies mostly and trying to kit out my new ship. But we'll get onto that, I'm sure, later on. Yes, I do uh, have some stove things <laughs> we can discuss today. Um, um, and woo. just also trying to get in some reading to finish off the book, which we'll be covering in the next uh, book club. You know, we're, we're, we're supposed to be talking about books. Books. 
there are these down things with paper and words. I've heard <laughs> tales of the dead tree format, but I don't believe them. No, you're wrong. They're this thing that you put on your Kindle. Amazon, ebook. If you haven't bought it, I will cunt punch you. That's a great <laughs> That's a line. Good, it's a good line. Do you read Star Trek novels? <laughs> I'm sure Swallow has some stories he could tell us. I love big books and I can't die. That's one of the really good things in life. To me, as long as it's enjoyable to read. That's it, a good book. Wasn't it a good book, Mike? It was. That's because Please. Mackenzie Calhoun is badass. <laughs> no, it is not a Cardassian generational epic. I was like in heaven. It's really good. Right on. Down uh, about 75 What is the next book? book? Cast No Shadow by James Swallow. <laughs> Okay, which what? one is that? This is the Valeris one. Yeah, the oh, one. it's got wow, Valeris yeah, and, and Spock on the cover. So, I'm about three quarters of the way through it at the moment. But yeah, things have just been so mental at work. I haven't even had a chance to always uh, read it during lunchtime. The other day, my lunch started at 20 past three in the afternoon and lasted for a whole 12 minutes. <laughs> um, it's oh. just been that sort of mental. Uh, it's been fun. I, I um, have been reading and it, I, I have blown through the first two books in the series and pretty much everything else has been put on hold. Now there's eight books in the series I'm reading right now. Don't know if I'm going to hold the momentum, but I sure hope so because uh, I'm reading what's called the Mercy Thompson series. Have you ever heard of this? No, I haven't. No. Um, I've heard when, you talk about it before, I think. When I first met the lovely Kelly Madden, which, by the way, Kelly invited me to her house for Thanksgiving, so that's going to be so much fun. Um, nice. Well, right otherwise, otherwise, I was going to have some Mrs. Stouffer's or Marie Callender's <laughs> turkey pot pies, and she was like, no, you're not. Yeah. But um, when I first started reading Kelly's book, I was like, ooh, I, I kind of like this urban fantasy thing. And she was like, oh, well, read the Mercy Thompson books. Mercy Thompson is uh, a woman in her mid-20s. She's a mechanic, um, and she she was raised by werewolves. Uh, and, and, of course, there's fae, and there's vampires, and, and all kinds of stuff. But it, it's it's so well-written. It's just amazing. And the second book just – I thought the first book was great, and then the second book kicked ass on the first book. So I can't even imagine what it will be like by the time I get to book eight because it just keeps getting better and better. And I, I think – I think if they were to make a movie, I can, in my mind, I see Adrian Palicki playing this character. Huh. Maybe it's because I'm loving her character in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. so yeah. much. Yeah, but, I do have but, to say, I adore her character. Oh my god, how great was this week's episode? I know. Have they come out of the uh, SUV yet? <laughs> Yeah, I hated him. <laughs> but you know what I think captured their, their their relationship perfectly? Was how much they don't trust each other. Well, but yet how much they do. They love each other. When he it's walked so in cute. and he said, you're twirling. Yeah. I thought that was just a great little character moment, which a lot of, I, I don't know how many people would appreciate. But I thought, okay, that's that's why yeah. they, they get each other. He, he understands her to that point. Yeah. Sorry to make you squirrel. I apologize. No, no, I, that's okay, because I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it, it's just getting and they're coming up on the on the, the mid-season end already as is uh walking dead and everything is uh, real quick i've i've been reading uh stave max section 31 disavowed oh yeah i, I really want to read that book I, I, really I got good. it delivered <laughs> straight away because really i pre-ordered it but yeah yeah i'm really enjoying time reading. it I just downloaded it this week. But I'm in the middle of. Um, I did get another. I, a bunch of people at work asked me to read a book that was uh, written by a Native American author, and it's a set of short stories called uh, Lone Ranger and Tonto. It's by Evan, so I'm starting that at the behest of uh, my coworkers. So, since sixty some odd percent of my coworkers are Native American, and when they all say you need to read this book, I'm like, all right, I'll read the book. <laughs> So I just got that. I downloaded it at the same time as I downloaded just about. So I'll get to it soon. I, I wanna wanna do something here. I wanna pimp something real quick that we have no involvement with whatsoever, but it's I've become what I've fallen into the habit of doing is you all know that I've been playing a lot of world tanks. Yeah. I have burned through so many batteries from my controller. It's pathetic. <laughs> Seriously. It's a console game? Yeah, it's on my Xbox. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it no, was it's also it's an on, it, it's a PC game, but it's also on the Xbox. And the oh, whole reason cool. I got I was going to get it, but I didn't feel like paying $40 for it. Right. Well, Xbox, every month they have the first half of the month they'll have a game you can download for free in the second month. Most of the time, they're not games that interest me. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. We all have our, our styles. Like there's uh, a fantasy game, I think, right now or, or something that. But I saw World of Text. I was like, oh, well, hell, I'm just going to 
and buy it for forty dollars, and now I don't have to. Um, so that's the whole reason I got it. But what I've taken to doing is I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm playing the game, mm. so I'm multitasking. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you have ever heard of the author Brett Easton Ellis, who Terry, I'm sure you love mm-hmm. his work, um, American Psycho, Less Than Zero. Um, he uh, he has a podcast that is I find so compelling and so interesting. Uh, his take on Hollywood and writing and all of these things are amazing. And he really he discusses a lot of the things we discuss, you know, storytelling, character, mm-hmm. all of that. And I think one of the, the really interesting things that that he's talked about is how Hollywood is just so broken right now. Yeah. Um, that you know he thought the best movie that he saw studio wise, major studio wise this year, and it depressed him in a way. And I can understand it was Guardians of the Galaxy. And it, it depressed them because why, where are the really deep movies, why are the comic book movies the best movies right now? You know what I mean? Where, where's the Silkwoods? That are- oh, yeah. They're not going to be making more of those. The, the independents have been saddled with doing the important movies now because the studios do, can't risk it. They just right. they won't risk it. And, and yeah, he talks about all, all of these. Yeah. And he's got such an, an amazing diverse amount of guests on. I thought the oh, Ivan cool. Reitman interview oh. Wow. Yeah, was, was cool. phenomenal. So uh, just a little pimping for for a podcast that I I, I really I, I've even subscribed to it. And, you know, I don't even right subscribe on. to us. So, um, well, so, what since, the hell is that, Sensei? Since since yeah, you go ahead, mentioned a, a a game, I'm going to mention a game. Um, I got I got my ne- nephews uh, Lego Batman Three Beyond oh, Gotham. How is it? Let's. It's amazing. I also got them the season pass with all the DLC content. Oh, cool. You know, nice. so and oh my god, the game is beautiful. It, it's a Lego game, so it's fun, it's easy, and um, is it hilarious? It is, but I have to tell you, they they they, they already beat it. Mason already beat the, the 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 story. Okay, wow. And he started playing some of the DLC content, and I have to tell you, last night uh-huh. the level that he played after you play the, the the main story was you know some of the DLC content, and it was nineteen sixty. Six Batman. It was awesome. It, like, they ha- oh, that's too cool. It was totally cool. They, I mean, you, you were playing. You had the, the original costumes. You had. You were driving around in the original Batmobile. You were oh, in the original right Batcave. That is totally worth it, right there. Oh, yeah. it was totally awesome. I was squeeing the whole time, and they were like looking at me and says, "What the big deal? It's just Batman." I said, "No, you don't understand. This is Batman from my childhood. I was mm-hmm. your age." when I was watching this for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Oh, that is so God. cool. Well all, worth it. You all know that my love of Batman, right? And that my yes. next tattoo is Batman. Yes. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit something publicly here that I don't think I've ever admitted before. Oh. And and, and I, it will have me publicly flogged and I will be treated like a Salem witch and that's okay. Oh, welcome to my world. Not really a fan of the Adam West Batman. <laughs> It's okay. I wasn't. I wasn't either. Also, okay. Then I, Nick, I, you know what? Let me. Let me. No one Batman be, is also one of the DLCs. I'm just. Saying. I have to be in a really specific. I have to be in a mood yes. for, for to watch that Batman. You know yeah. what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just what it the hell the is it, going it on? The that that there are flying Catwoman. dildos. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I love our chat room. Um, uh, but there are no, there is a Nolan DLC or Nolan Batman DLC. Oh, is there? Yes, and it's pretty awesome. Is, is but I don't think the kids have gotten uh, there yet. Is there also a? Uh, uh, oh my God, Tim. Uh, Tim Burton one. Tim Burton. Burton. All of the all of the Batman films are represented, and then nice. there's even all the, going all the way back because you know, one of the, another, another another one of the the DLCs is the 75th anniversary. So you have Batman's from every single era represented throughout this throughout the game, and uh, it's it's awesome. Um, Another one is the Man of Steel, Superman, Man of Steel, because it's it's you have all the DC characters in, as part of the main game. So one of the DLCs is also the Superman. But uh, the, the the 75th anniversary uh, Batman stuff is amazing. I mean, everything Neat. from the original comic forward. So Neat. very cool. Speaking of Superman, am I the only one loving Brandon Routh in Agents no. in uh, in Arrow? If, if you are 
are watching he's out. Good. So cool. He's he good. Is, he is phenomenal. I have and well, I have a special dreamy. adoration for him anyway. He's 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 who I base Bill on my character. Oh really? Bill. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. That he, if if I had the ability to to do uh, cast heritage, he'd play Bill. I, I'm going to agree with Grim here. J- Julie Newmar hashtag that is all. <laughs> I, I will yeah. agree with that. I have to think. I just have this uh, this special adoration for Eartha Kitt. I can't help it. See, I love see, her. see. Is Grumpkin the, Will? Is Grumpkin Will V? I doubt it. And which Brandon keep, is, this, is this? You know what, Nick? It doesn't is matter. Is this Will's who you Brandon? Is, they're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Will's Brandon in the chat room? Is this is this beautiful Brandon? Yeah. We're not going to spend the show trying to guess. Yeah, let's. We, we we need to move on. Yeah, we're an hour in. And we're still in coffee class. <laughs> well, no, hold on. Be fair. But we had yes. an awesome. We interview. did. We awesome did have interview. an awesome interview. That was God, that was so, so fun. Yes. fun. Yes, she was. That was oh, amazing. That was so cool. Um, so let's get to a little bit of Star Trek news. Star Trek news. I am so proud to be a talkie geek. We've got our problems with the film, which we'll get into on our dopey little podcast and nitpick it to death. Star Trek news. So congratulations to the always dreamy David Mack. There's Legos. Oh, yeah. Star Trek news. Yes, the story behind the story. The movie <laughs> that never was made. They got a Klingon. I know. Sold. That's right. I'm going to throw in a Buck Mackay rookie guard. That's right. A Buck Mackay for people. It doesn't get any bigger than the Star Trek news. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> Long time no see. Welcome, those guys. I was just talking about Brandon and Will yesterday. Yeah, I miss you guys terribly. Likewise. Yep. I got to see Will in game for all of about forty seconds. Oh, bitch, uh, please. I know. Will, I... that's so. That's okay. First article. First article is a verification that Shatner will be meeting with or see in the near future or they're still talking about him appearing in Star Trek what is it 14 13 I don't know they're calling it Greek it's whatever the in one. the new Star Trek film uh, Shatner is still in discussions to make an appearance in the in the movie um, again it's all just <laughs> the talk. overwhelming silence that that yeah. was met with <laughs> yeah I know I know <laughs> Uh, the other thing that came out this week was, um, I'm sure everybody's been sharing them like crazy. The season seven, uh, Blu-ray for the next generation has come out and a couple of uh, sites got their, got a taste of the blooper reel. Have you, has everybody seen this yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. No. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> The gag reel from season seven is, is really funny. I have to say it's probably my favorite one. Some of the stuff that has come out. Now I'm going to go out and run, get the, the Blu-ray season seven. I have four or five seasons on Blu-ray, but I didn't get six. But now I'm going to go out and get seven. Are you I'll anti-six? Or? I just forgot to believe it or not. We've been so busy. We haven't really been sitting down and watching any of them. So for me to, to have it in the forefront of my mind, uh, hasn't been there. It just hasn't been there. But this this gag reel just cracked me up. So the, the link is in there to the Gizmodo uh, article. But, and it'll uh, be in our show notes. It, and you can also figure it, you can also, it's actually Uprox that got the rights to the blooper reel. To, to. Speaking of watching, Terry, yeah. Janice is uh, into the second season of Deep Space Nine. Oh, and, uh, very cool. Loving Odo. Yeah, Odo's, Odo's great, right? I and mean, there isn't a character on that show that isn't compelling, truly. And I... I she, and, she doesn't feel that way. Oh, who does she hate? I don't think she hates anybody. I, I just think she's having a difficult time getting into it. Yeah. I really like uh, Kira. I, but, uh, Kira got me through the first couple of seasons, and then it was, and then it was Jezia, and then it was, you know, I just kind of, I kind of jumped from favorite character to favorite character, but by the end of it all, Garrick had my heart. Um, this also is week where we celebrate the 18th anniversary of Star Trek First Contact. 18 Jesus years. Christ. I know. 18 years. Crazy. Uh, wonderful article about it on StarTrek.com. It's, it's just it's so crazy. Kind of, I know. What is, and it was probably the one movie with the one scene where Deanna Troy finally comes off as somebody, you know. Speaking of blended. <laughs> <laughs> I loved everything about her character in that movie. It wasn't like I will say, she, you know, she what? was funny. She was she was sarcastic. You know, the whole she, thing with, she, with the three of you like to be alone. That was awesome. What she was Marina. She, she was. It, they were all themselves. Riker, Frakes was Riker. Marina was Marina. I mean, it was really, it, with the exception of and and two big powerhouse actors got to do a knockdown drag up in a in a, a singular room scene. I mean, Alfred Woodard and, and uh, Patrick Stewart. 
That was I, what I would have given to have been a fly on the wall during the filming of those scenes. That would have been awesome. <sighs> So cool. Um, a now for products. A couple of new products have been released in the UK. The Haynes USS Enterprise press out and build has been made available. Have you guys seen how cool this is? It's a um, paper model of the uh, Enterprise from the Haynes mechanical or the, uh, the manual. Just looking it at it now. So cool. <laughs> no, I haven't. Not yet. It, you get to build that it. is interesting. That is really. It's like a paper model. They're finally kind of getting back. I don't know. I don't want to say as a tribute or anything, but they're kind of getting back to the way some of the uh, toys from Star Trek, the original series especially, were, were advertised and, and pushed out um, in the 60s and 70s. Because I remember paper paper models of the ships in the 70s. And it's kind of neat to see them making a comeback because that's really cool. That is interesting. Um, there's also been, I, I've, I've seen around um, pop up uh, a pop-up book. Have you? As well, yeah. Uh, I'll have to try to find the link. Cool. Uh, for all of the ladies who appreciate her universe, wear, which I totally adore. So far, I haven't. I, I've I've liked almost everything that uh, they've come up with as far as t-shirts. These are the most adorable hoodies. Oh, and shirts. Wow. Uh, sorry, I but, don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but it's actually no. by Paula Block and Terry Erdman. <laughs> it, oh yeah, isn't that cute? I mean, oh, so I'll get the I'll get the the link in our chat room in a second. Awesome. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. I'm again. It's very very cool. Um, um, the T-shirts that have come out from her universe, which are really new and, and very different from everything that they've done before, are utterly adorable. These are both original series-based uh, shirts. Uh, one, of course, is the Peter Pan quote that Captain Kirk made in um, Undiscovered Country, I believe, right? The second star to the right and straight on till morning. Yeah, uh, Star Trek Six. And then right I have been and always shall be your friend from uh, two. And one is that you can get them in, in a T-shirt or in a light t-shirt hoodie and they're so cute and they come in sizes small to double xl and they're 32 dollars and available at heruniverse.com love 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 them i think they're cute i had shared the link uh to the star trek pop-ups it's an amazon link uh it's what i had what came up when i did the search but yeah Yeah. it's uh, by paula block and uh, terry erdman and one more um but it's kind of cool it's got you know um deep space nine jumps up there's a cute there's the NX Enterprise. It looks like there's even that scene from TOS with the uh, with the Spock and the Horta. DS9 How looks awesome. Cool. And this is the pop up book. It's a pop up book. Oh so my you open god! It up, I shit is it available at you. in the US too, or is it just UK like the other one? No, this oh, one's dot com. This is on Amazon.com. Okay, com. okay yeah. cool. Awesome. <laughs> currently unavailable. What do you mean currently unavailable? Oh, oh. I didn't see that part. Crap. <laughs> Foiled again. Oh. Well, maybe they sold out. Maybe that's a good thing. All right. Yeah. It is well, available then, in the UK. I don't know. Yeah, it's 19.95 here in the UK. Cool. Finally, as far as regular Star Trek uh, news is concerned, Vox.com has a wonderful little article about current. You know, we've always taken pride as Star Trek and that a lot of new science or technology that we use today was inspired by uh, Star Trek. And you know, we've got pads for all intents and purposes. We have pads in our hands. We have uh, communicators that have come in. Isolate that. <laughs> But this article talks about the technology that that scientists are currently working on that have been inspired by uh, Star Trek, including invisibility cloaking, 3D printers, which are as close to replicators as we're starting to get, which is pretty amazing stuff. Um, Holodecks. They're working on holodecks and teleportation and faster than light travel. Wasn't wasn't that one of the things that they said in the EIS interview was that they were going to do something with 3D printers yes. for, for sending yeah. it to space. I mean, how awesome is that? And and how would that work? I mean, you have to think about the, the fact of the matter is right now, 3D printers work in part because they're building from a base that's held in one spot by gravity. I mean, what if you lose that gravity? How do you print? How does that come out? How do you hold the piece that's currently being printed? So uh, gravity really fucks things up, man, I'll tell you. Well, uh, <laughs> real quick, uh, Matt Anderson had posted an article in the chat room about the 2014 Star Trek holiday 
gift guide. And in it, there's a picture of a a Borg mini fridge. and The refrigerator. Uh, it came out a few months awesome. ago. Isn't that the cutest thing? That is awesome. It, it holds like a six pack of something. Yeah. And, uh, six pack it, of nanoprobes. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I just want, I, I thought that, that was definitely deserving a shout out. So, there you go. Apparently, it also has a warm setting. That what? You can keep food warm. Wow. Do you ever have a day where you just wished for assimilation? So you wouldn't have to think or do anything anymore? There are days. Yeah. Just be so much better. What is the line from Loki in uh, The Avengers? The worst part, the, you know, we're going to free you from your freedom? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And let's see. Now we can get to a little bit of. You know, I don't know if we discussed it, but it does fit with. Did you all hear the massive screaming and gnashing of teeth and crying when Cumberbatch announced his engagement? Oh, that's that's to be expected from a certain age group of women. These were 50-year-old women, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a certain age. It, it, it happens to be a okay. wide range so, of ages, but it does. He's, he's got a very broad... He does. Uh, and, and, and now but he's, he's, he was never going to marry them. They're known as Cumberbitches, aren't they? Yes, they are. And he's been cast as Doctor Strange. Yes, we know. Very, very cool. Well, we'll see how that... Has that been set in stone yet? Because there was... He was in talks for it, but I don't know if it was actually... come. If he actually put pen to paper on that yet. So we need to... We just need to clarify that. He was in talks. We're assuming he put the pen to paper, but... No, I think they announced it formally. Want some coffee? Yes. <laughs> I'm having some water. Thank you. Um, let me think. Okay, so now we can move on. Ooh, uh, Star Trek Online. Yay, yay. I love play Star Trek Online. Engineering here. Warp engines are online. Course laid in, Captain. Engage. Your ship. Warning. Ship is under attack. Your crew. Move out. Your destiny. First, I thought this was really adorable. My friend Justin Olivetti, who uh, was my when I was working at Massively. Uh, Wait a minute, Justin. Grumpkin has scotch. So we all, I have scotch too, but not in a glass currently. Do we think it's Dayton? No, he drinks vodka. Jespa said Jeepers Grumpkin, aka Kevin Dilmore. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Dilmore, no. <laughs> oh, come about just oh, how are you, Benedict? She's a, a, a Broadway and uh, amazing she produces, eyes. Produces, she's an actress but she's also a director and a producer of um, amazing plays. eyes she reminds me a little bit of jennifer aniston in the eyes. um yeah a little bit so. that's a pale color right there bless you whoever that was that was my son uh, <laughs> uh, steve's doing blow with his kids how sweet oh. <laughs> <laughs> well justin olivetti over at massively did a really kind of cool article this week on uh the game archaeologist it's a monthly article that he does where he kind of pulls out an MMO from from the past and talks about it. But it was interesting because he did Star Trek Online, but he tried, but what the focus of this article was, was how Star Trek Online came into being, especially, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, get all tangled up in those. Oh, okay, okay. She, she went under the desk and got tangled up in all of the cords. Oh my goodness. All right, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. You're Hi, Chloe. Oh, go. I miss them so much. There you go, boy. Well, Star Trek Online, most people know, was originally licensed to be produced by Perpetual Entertainment before they needed to sell it in a fire sale to Cryptic. But what most people do not know is that it was originally supposed to be produced by Sony Online Entertainment. And Sony Online Entertainment decided to ditch it off to Perpetual because they were going to focus on Star Wars Galaxies. There's a great article that Justin put together. Uh, he put it on November 22nd. Let me, did I put it in the chat room already? I think I did. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. And, um, you know, it's kind of like that, oh, gee, what things might have been had Perpetual kept it or had Sony kept it. Would it be like Star Wars Galaxies? I apologize for the dogs fighting in the background, but uh, my husband's in Atlanta, so I need to watch him. Oh, no problem. You're doing fine. It's the wrestling match. I get two a day. Um, <laughs> Tun- <laughs> Tunsaki! <laughs> and what we might have seen had Perpetual kept and, and been able to afford to keep the license. Would we have seen a less of a battle-focused MMO? And if we had, would it have been as successful? Because Star Trek Online is about to celebrate its fifth anniversary now with Cryptic. And yes, it's a battle-focused game, and no, it's not anything like Roddenberry had envisioned from the blah, blah, blah. But it's also more successful than I think a lot of people had given it credit for. I think a lot of people saw the death of the game right around year two. And uh, when Atari finally let Cryptic out of its grasp and into a company that really knew how to make MMOs as opposed to just out-of-the-box games, um, the game has seen a resurgence and and it went free to play. The the subscription-based program for it just wasn't working. And and it's kind of interesting. So I kind of wanted to talk to you uh, to everybody in the room about that, about, you know, do you think that a non-battle focused game would have been a, a, a success. I don't. <laughs> well, I I think it, it still would have found a niche market, but it wouldn't have been as popular. Um, I think Stowe, as its current setup, appeals to a wide range, a wider range of. of of gamers, um, so again, yes and no. But again, it's it's it, again, it would have been more focused rather than you know appealing to so many people. Right. I, I my husband's in the chat room. Hi, honey, because he had a picture of Chloe with him. Mm-hmm. How cute is that? But uh, well, the it, it, I agree. I think that um, there still needs, and I would love to see a an injection of more exploration and diplomacy um, woven into. The game to this day i would still love that but i really do have to say i don't think that the game would have been successful if that had been the focus i think that um you have to appeal to a wider audience in the entertainment industry especially with games because there is a certain expectation that an mmo is you know what else is there to do except shoot things i have yet to see an mmo that is as successful where battle isn't the focus of the game have, have you guys what wasn't there a kickstarter for jane Eyre's uh mmo at some point that was hyper successful i don't know what happened with that yet but again you know i think they were on a four-year plan i think they were still in development phase so i don't think it's even out but the kickstarter was super successful if i remember correctly yeah it was it was very very successful i just don't know what the status of that is and because i don't work for massively anymore i don't hear so (laughs) yeah the thing is is every game any successful game there's some sort of combat even if you look at mario He's fighting yeah. somebody. It's not, right. there's nothing where it's just diplomatic because, yes, it might appeal to a very small group of people, but it's not going to make money or survive. Well, I think, I think it, it really comes down to the, 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 everything up to this point pretty much has been focused on the male, for, towards the male gamer. And, you know, we're, we're about to, we're entering into, into times when, when the female ga- gamer is, is wanting to to come come forward and, and whatnot, and I think I think as a result things are going to evolve, and I think one of the the ways it'll evolve is is, is towards maybe not so much non combat, but you know more thoughtful type of of. Story gameplay, driven. story, yeah, story driven, thoughtful uh, gameplay, maybe puzzles, uh, things that I personally would love to see uh, Star Trek on, online adopt. Okay, that was somebody might drop the mic. <laughs> so it's like, so it's like, I pissed somebody off. I think. I think Terry's Nick just gone to sort wants, the... I think Nick wants more tanks. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm listening. <laughs> well, something you, that oh, Terry's gone. Have you seen? I'm just posting the, dogs the chat room. Room. They, 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 just posted they in the chat room something from Al. Oh yes, I think I see this. Saw this. Yes, Nick needs to see this too. Nick, would you like to see Felicia Day do vo- voiceover work for Star Trek Online? No, not at all. I don't like Felicia. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's what Al tweeted um, the other day. So 
uh, yeah, people are saying, hell yes, I would. That'd be awesome, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, we fully support that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Nick is speechless. Oh, I just, she's just. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, Al. You have Nick's approval. <laughs> <laughs> she's just the sweetest. Oh, do it. Um, Felicia Al Day. Rivera had yeah. posted, would you like to see Felicia Day do VO work for Star Trek Online? This oh was uh, some time last night. I know, uh, right, Terry? Uh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. So on from B, from take so my money. Say, oh wait, you already do. So uh, to Al on behalf of the GNT T show, we say yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, Thumbs up. Please. Uh, one of the other articles that came out is not about Star Trek Online, however, it is about the other game that we tend to cover, which is uh, Star Trek Timelines. Uh, Disruptor Beam, which is the production company in charge of Star Trek Timelines, which is a multi, what would you call a multi, a multi-platform game, Michael? It's yes. browser-based. It's, it's a browser-based mobile. game, yeah. Yeah. Any, anything Sounds that has right. a browser, it will work on. <laughs> I'm just reading. I'm sorry, Nick... I'm just thinking about Felicia Day. Well, I was going to say Grimagination, hashtag that that one right. Nick will be in his bunk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, an interesting article about Disruptor Beam. They secured $3.2 million in Series A funding uh, with some money from the rock band Harmonix uh, to go ahead and continue funding its games, most of which will be Star Trek Timeline. So that's great news woot. for the future of the game. What's that? I said woot. Woot is right. Yes. Um, the, there's I'm just going to throw this out there, Cryptic. If you need somebody to come and escort Felicia Day the entire time, I, I will I will take the time off of work to help you guys to lessen your workload. <laughs> I will do that for you. <laughs> so yeah, about but... you, Al. You do know that her restraining order against you is still active. There is no restraining order from her. <laughs> How dare not you, yet, sir? Anyway. How dare you, sir? There will be once this is released. <laughs> it's not like she's Nicole DeBoer. <laughs> Um, but uh, so I wanted to get that. Uh, oh my God! I just saw that picture. I, this is this is a problem sometimes of, of having multiple tabs open and then going back to the GNT the chat, room. chat room, and all of a sudden you see Jim Carrey with his hand in his pants, and you're like, Oh, I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> Who does? So um, it, I wanted to get that information out there about Star Trek timelines and the fact that you know it is still a game that is in uh, development and development takes gargantuan amounts of money even if it is a small game or a mobile game uh, people don't realize the costs that are associated so for all of you bastards who are out there who are commenting and continue to comment and bitch and, and moan and, and gripe about every little thing that you you know that they actually charge you for a game you can go stuff it square up your butt because if they didn't charge they wouldn't be able to make the game so don't be an idiot you know the, the Nick Dugui Taco Fang put something on Facebook a couple of weeks ago about a wonderful little application um, game from uh, Android and iOS called Monument Valley. Have you guys seen that? Yes, and uh, they, they, Amazon was giving it away for free one day. Yeah, well, they were giving away the, uh, which I think is so amazing because it was only four bucks to begin with. I think that's what bothers me the most is, is uh, kind of start from the beginning. Monument Valley is fantastic little. It's not a big game. It's a little game um, for both your Android and your I, uh, your Apple-based mobile devices. And it's a sweet little game, and it's beautiful. Uh, the first game costs three ninety nine dollars uh, through your game play, your game store, or your uh, I, iTunes, and or your Apple app, or whatever they call it. And they have, I want to say, two expansions that both cost $1.99 each, right? Uh, the gamer community in its continuous no, idiocy is, I guess, the best way to come out with it. In it sarcastically, uh, in its infinite wisdom. In it, yes. Um, had, because the second uh, expansion for it had come out and they were charging $1.99 for it, yet it contains just as much content as the original game does, um, started to purposefully give the game a one-star review because they were charging for it which as we all know how games tend to get advertising is they get the five stars up there first 
for any foundry author in Star Trek Online who understands this pattern, mm -hmm. your foundry work will never be seen if it's purposefully dissed by a group of disgruntled assholes. Because if, if somebody gives it a bunch of one star reviews, it gets buried, literally buried. And this is a now, thank goodness for Taco Fangs because he put this out there on the Facebook and I had never heard of the game. Well, now I understand. Did you say why. on the Facebook? I'm sorry? Nothing. Well, either way, it you got said, buried. You said on the Facebook and it just sounded no, like. I said, no, on his face page. Oh, I'm, I'm kind that. of popping in and out a little bit today. I'm also getting a little bit of a, uh, I'm not hearing, how do I say, it's Skyping a little bit today. Yeah, I noticed some earlier with, with Nick. Yeah, and, and I'm not exactly sure why, but our connections aren't that great. It might be weather related across the U.S. And so. Yeah, we're getting or strong winds out here. We, you know, trying to make you, something's wrong. Which is really funny because he totally Skyped right then, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I I was putting my finger on and off the oh, you were? push okay. to talk by <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a great photo of Kaylee. So, mm -hmm. one of the things, <laughs> so along those lines with Star Trek Align and with um, with Timeline too is you know the the fact of the matter these games take a lot of money to make and they have to not just recoup their costs. These are not not profit organizations. They're for profit company which has shareholders they need to respond to and if they don't make a profit they get cut. So yeah, deal with it, asshole. So awesome. if you don't like, like the fact that it, you know people are charging money for their product, then um, go out and get a job and learn what it's like to live in the real world. Yeah, there's been a lot of people complaining on the so forums regarding the new Pathfinder ship that came out and about because they the, have to pay for it. Yeah, and well, especially pe people yeah. saying, "Oh, I've just done a tier five upgrade on my ship. Why should I have to pay?" And like, you know, it's not just Star Trek Online either. It's every game. I mean, I Lord of the Rings just came out with an expansion called Gondora Flame. And there was actually some kind of a call that lifetime members shouldn't have to pay for a certain aspect of it. Not just, they don't have to pay for the expansion. The expansion itself is part and parcel. It was free. But if you wanted like the shiny toys, you have to pay for it. And people are like, I don't think lifetime was how to do that. Well, no, you don't know. Yes, they have to pay for it. I mean, just like everybody else. So weird. I mean, they get a stipend and they haven't offered lifetime membership to Lord of the Rings online in more than four years. So there's a reason. They were losing money on it. I don't know. I got uh, so Terry. I got totally annoyed. But back to, to kind of Star Trek Online. I finally got. Hmm? I was going to ask. Right. So I hear your computer's working now. <laughs> My computer's... It How is, is it? I spent... Oh, my God. I spent all day yesterday in two different games. I, I uh, a good portion of Star Trek Online. Uh, kind of... And I have to say, I'm going to admit it. I'm going to admit it. Kobali Prime is kind of a grind. My frustration with Kobali Prime right now... Uh, Beth was a 40... Uh, uh, level 53. She made it to level 54 yesterday. And it took a long... You know, it takes a while... I, but my biggest frustration about about the way that it is set up, it's not so much the grind of having to do the same kind of um, missions over and over again. It's the fact I can't get there fast enough. There is no transportation system across the grid, right? Uh, so there are. There, there is. No, there's not. There is. No, you have, not. You have to unlock it as you go along. How? When you complete the missions. Yeah, when you complete certain missions, it'll open up a tra uh, the, a tra uh, the local transporter spot. Okay. But you and have to complete. The because mission I'm first. not getting anything to open. Mm. I have been all the way around into the forest. I've done them all, and I still have to. And I still have to walk. Is I didn't find Kambali Prime a grind at all. I wasn't really on there that long. I did the main story once, and then continued on with the rest of the actual stories. Yeah. Even the entire thing, I'd actually got to level 60 before I'd actually completed the last two missions. Yeah, my biggest problem right now is I, for some reason, I can't seem to unlock transporters. Hmm. And it's pissing me off. <laughs> so now you can understand my frustration is that I, you know, it, this is a Don't huge, get very angry. You won't huge like map. Angry. Well, yeah. It I'm is. Cranky. I do get cranky. Um, it's a huge map. And mm -hmm. there's few areas in the trenches where uh, the repeatable missions pop up. There's two in the forest, and then there's two in the high forest, right? Uh, up in the mountains kind of thing. I got, I walked all the way around, and I was lucky to catch, no lie, two of them before they timed out. And I would go to, like, the two in the trenches I did, I would go over to the little um, Kobali command center, and I can't even transport back into the city. I 
have to run all the way back into the city. Oh, that's insane. And it's very, 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 very frustrating. So that's where my biggest beef is right now is what is it? Why can't, what is it that I'm missing that I can't unlock these transporters? So I, I'm going through and now I'm, I've, I've gotten the level 54. I've done the temple uh, mission with Harry Kim. And now I go, and now I have literally 90% of 54 to get through before it opens up my next mission. And for me, it's like, okay, I either have to do this by PDEQ or running around and trying to. So now it's just gotten to the point where I don't even run around anymore. I just sit in one place and wait or I'll, hmm. or I'll switch. Um, into yeah, there's been a lot of people that said they've had troubles leveling up. But I don't yeah. know what I did differently, but I never had any transporters problem. would make everything better because there's always at least three of these missions available. Every time you bring up the map, there's three big red circles. The thing with me is I <laughs> only did in the opposite area of where I'm at. I only did a repeatable mission on Kabali Prime once. I didn't keep going through any of those missions. I literally just did the story ones and then yeah. went on my way. The, the, so the un- saying there's a first mission that unlocks the first transporter. All right, yeah. So I when I right so I. Can go from the city to the trenches. That's the only transporter that works for me. The others should should have unlocked as part of the story pro- progression as well. So if you've completed the story, the Kabali story, you should have, at, I think it's like four or five I'm just wondering if um, what's happening is you're doing the repeatable content instead of the story content, which is why they haven't been unlocked. Well, let me see. Like I said, I did the temple one yesterday. It, it opened okay. up, it, it, it unlocked at level 54. I was so excited. I was Yay, I finally got to 54. So I ran to the general and he gave me the, the temple mission. And then I went back over to Harry Kim and then I ran all the way to the temple. And that's when I found out about why the temple was so special. That's story content. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. after the end of that, I got it beamed me back to the city. And then that's when it said, okay, your next story unlocks at level 55. And now I'm like, okay, great. So I jump down to the end of the city. I go to the transporter and it says, where would you like to transport? And then it says to the trenches or to the, um, yeah, to the, and it's one. I have one selection. There's only one that's open. And I've been running around just trying to get through some of those repeatable missions so I can level myself up so I can do the story content. It's all about the cardio. <laughs> um, so you're not... But there's no transporter available for me. And that's what's driving me nuts because I would love nothing more than to be able to go, oh, great. Now I can head up to the high forest and get that. Because I, I think they're fun when you're there. I like... I, the repeatable missions are actually kind of fun. I like the idea of um, cutting off the supply in that little canyon. That's a really a fun mission. I have good. I have a good time with those. Well, uh, Sun says she thinks it's stupid. I thought it was stupid with new Romulus, uh, the Romulan rep as well. Um, is that in, is that in regards to the unlocking the transporters in R- New Romulus? It kind of made a little bit more sense, I guess. Because, so you could explore the the planet. Well, that but has, I'm, I'm kind of kind of like impression that I'm missing blazing. something. Yeah, I'm missing something. Because yeah. there should be a way for me to get from the trenches to the high forest to get to the missions that are available up there. Right now, the, the, well, it is so huge. It, by the time I run all the way up to the high forest, the mission's over with, and I can't participate in it. And now I'm stuck in an area where, of course, is on the opposite side of what mission is available. So I'm lucky. I was I was lucky to get four of them yesterday. Mm. It was really nice. so. The, I just PDED to get me through. It. Yeah. Um, so I, I've got that is odd. Something. Yeah, I've yeah. got to be missing something, and I don't know what it was. Um, then the other game I was in, I finally got to get back into Lord of the Rings Online, and I have a, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, their expansion update 15 came out with a new, not just a new um, type of. They actually came out with an entirely new class of uh, of player. Um, when you start the game, normally for the past seven years, you've had the ability to play as a man, an elf, a dwarf, or a hobbit, and they just added a uh, Bjorning, which is essentially the skin changer, the bear, and so I. I rolled a new bear yesterday and I got her cool. up to level 15 already. And Did I you say love bear? bear. Yes. Like it Smokey is, the? Yes. You get to, uh, in Lord of the Rings, uh, Tolkien wrote about Bjorn, uh, Bjorning or, as a skin changer. It's a type of man that can, almost like a werewolf, turns into a bear. So you have the ability to fight as a man or as your, ra- as your rage essentially builds up, your wrath builds up. Then you can change into a bear and fight as a bear and just claw the shit out of orcs. It's awesome. 
<laughs> right on. So I, I I rolled a new your name this week this week or yesterday and uh, having a very very good time and I like the idea because it now all of a sudden it gives me another ra- reason to replay the entire game and yet still have a new expansion for my level 100 character who's out in Central Gondor right now. So while the, the story still continues and uh, my my high level elf character is uh, in Central Gondor. I spent pretty much all day yesterday playing with this new class of character, and I'm having a great time. As a bear. As a bear. She's a, well, she, she looks like a... Like a black bear, a grizzly bear, what kind of bear? She's actually talking? kind of brown when she turns into a bear. Yeah, she's a brown bear. So you're um, a bear. Oh, it's a bear. Yeah, it's, she's very cute. She's, she's well, cute in a, I will kill you in, at the moment you kiss me Do off. Do rainbows <laughs> come spouting out of her belly button? No, but blood flies <laughs> off the end of her claws. <laughs> Um, yeah, her, her, uh, I, I, I did. I, I, it's a, it's a female character. They kind of look like, um, oh, Viking, kind of a, a Norse Viking. He, and when they're, when they're in their human form, they kind of look like that Norse Viking. They, they wear a lot of, you know, fur armor or helmets, right on. things like that. And then, um, instead of having, every other character has like a power, which they call morale and, or I'm sorry, a, a lifeline, which they call morale and then a power. And you have to make sure that you keep, you don't lose any one of them. Bjornin have morale, but they um, instead of having power, they have wrath. And you have to build up enough wrath to change into a bear. And it's cool. I'm, I'm cool. enjoying it very, very much. Right on. Well, in in Stowe, let's see. Yep. I've I, I, I've been level sixty. I should have my Delta Quadrant reputation <laughs> completed um, either today or tomorrow. Um, I every time I've tried to run an advanced um, PVE queue to try to get the little unlock the little uh, optional objects that you need, you know, to like get gear. <laughs> Every time I try to run an advanced PVQ, it fails because huh. the team that I'm on doesn't oh. can't 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 do it. You know, can't uh, can't keep up to to keep or can't manage to you know kill the fifteen. And or, this is just on advanced, right? Yeah, <laughs> which is the only way to get those little objects. So it's like I I don't even try to run it on advanced anymore. If I because I'm not getting any any marks, I'm not getting anything for the time that we spend. And as soon as like on the um it was it's the, the the one where the Borg and the Undine and the that one's very fun, but it's frustrating because if you don't hit that fit if you don't rescue fifteen Borg vessels, automatic failure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not fun. <laughs> mm. And that's the you know, you have to run it on advance in order to get your your little doodads. Um so it's like I have no doodads. I'm about to hit my my uh, uh I have plenty of marks, but I don't have have any of the of the doodads that I need to to buy the gear and I'm on the verge of completing my rep and it's like I, I'm just frustrated okay and so you're talking about the doodads not unlike what would be the um, like on the undine you got the little test tubes of the the transformation hypos or whatever that they were and for like the the Borg it was the little um, uh, they look like little the Borg things devices. that you put into the reputation system projects to that allow you to, to get the access gear. like higher gear okay yeah. i know what you're talking about yeah so the, those little doodads um so i i, I have do that do that <laughs> I have three, and those three, I luck. I had gotten ver- as, as a, a pure luck thing from opening up the boxes along the way. Yeah. But if it wasn't for that, I would have none. And it, it, it takes like five in order to get a piece of gear. And like I said, every time I try to do, every single time I try to do the uh, the advanced queue, I get stuck on a team that has no idea that you're supposed to even be protecting the board or rescuing the board. And it's like, why are you playing? playing advanced if you don't even know how to play normal you know and it's just <laughs> aggravating rage <laughs> um i'm ancient power cells is what they're called thank you okay. um so uh, meanwhile i've been slowly chugging away at the story i'm loving the story although yeah. the mission i played yesterday i think it was yesterday um it was kind of kind of odd uh we get to see something happen and i, I don't want to spoil it because terry yeah, and I- I haven't been there yet. So I, I'm not going to tr- spoil it, but where, where things, the, the situation starts changing. 
And it's like, I don't know if I completely believe it. I don't know if I completely believe it. Huh. So uh, 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 I'm just going to say <laughs> that for now. It, it, it's like the follow-up. It's one of the follow-up missions to Dragon's Deceit, which I absolutely loved. Oh, my God, that one had me squee- squeeing all over the place. But um, th- this one is either the next mission or the next one after that. I forget. But I'm not sure I, I completely believe it. And, yeah, so I- I- I'm still interested in seeing how the story plays out, though. Interesting. How about you, Nick? Tell us about uh, your tanks. You blow stuff up, right? I blow things up. I have not been playing Star Trek Online just because uh, I have to patch it. It needs more and, things. No, I have to patch it. <laughs> and if I try and patch it, it'll it'll ruin my internet right now. So I have to wait and go somewhere and do that. Uh, you're on like a metered uh, internet? Uh, yeah. Mm, understandable. And when they do these 500 gigabyte patches i understand yeah. i understand the other day that there was uh, all, like some trouble when they put a new patch in like a lot of people were up. oh goodness i think i i remember that um although by the time i actually got in game it was already resolved so i'm not exactly sure what happened but i i do recall a little, yeah, Star a little Trek bit Online? Of, yeah there was a little yeah, bit i don't, of, I don't know what that was either um again it took me two days to get two two games on my computer Believe it or not, well, no, don't, that makes perfect sense, actually. Star Trek Online, was, it only took half as long as Lotro. Lotro was 20, 22 gig. Holy cow. So, I mean, it's huge. Well, then six gig of that is just the HD files because, yeah. you know, I, my hand, my computer can handle the high def stuff. So it's, Chloe is very upset about something, so I apologize. What Casey do? I think she sees a, a bunny. A, a, it's a bunny. It's totally a bunny. It's totally a bunny. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to stop her. No problem. Oh, Chloe! Dogs. <laughs> Those are awesome Oh my dogs, god, dogs. I turned around and Casey's sitting right here like, do you believe her? <laughs> oh yeah, this is so innocent. <laughs> Don't even, Casey. <laughs> He's got this big shit-eating grin on his face like, oh, Chloe's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rock. Now watch him. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Chloe, yeah. Come. Oh boy. Um let's see. Ishka- what, Chloe! what was that? It's an Ishka <laughs> Um so yeah, I, like I said, I'm having I'm having fun with the with the with, with the the new content. Just a little bit of frustration when it comes to to the PBEQ. Although I did unlock a, a new uh, a new PBEQ and that one's kind of fun. So I but I don't know if I can actually earn the ancient uh, power cells through them. I, I'll have to tr- give it a try on, on advance okay. and see. If I can, then I have an alternative. Um, but it's it the the one that I ha- I had just unlocked. Um, well, it unlocked with Dragon's Deceit was, um, it reminds me of the Undine one. And I, I actually kind of enjoyed that. So I un- un- Undine PBQ, that's fun. And I think this one is going to be just as much fun. But again, pugs, yeah, you gotta, you never know what you're going to get. They're like a box of chocolate, except usually it's shitty chocolate. <laughs> Has anybody tried the new Elite Qs at all? No, no, I have not because I'm not that nuts. <laughs> 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 I'm still trying to gear up all my stuff at the moment um, with the upgrades, so I haven't even attempted it. But uh, yeah, I've done some of the advanced stuff, but yeah, haven't trust, um, trusted myself with the elite just yet. Yeah, I, I, uh, on my first try uh, during using the upgrade system, I did get a a gold uh, shield for my ship. Nice. For, on the on the first try of the upgrade, uh, I was surprised. I went from fleet to gold, so. With with on first attempt, I haven't been able to get shit to upgrade after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 even even trying to get, even trying to get it to the 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 uh, very the ultra rare, you know, the very rare or whatever it is, the the, the fleet quality, the ultra rare. Even yeah. trying to get get it at that, uh, some of my gear to that level has been a pain. So uh, yeah, I I, I fl- got a fluke when I got the the gold shields, but I have uh, my sh- my ship is in worse shape than I am on, on the ground I, I do believe uh, and I've uh, upgraded everything at least once and, and I got everything up to level 14 you know uh, I've, so I've got I, a lot of my stuff that. up to 13 only um, I have started doing the consoles trying to upgrade those to gold so to like get extra crit severity and things like that 
that. So I've been trying, thinking I'll do those because then they can be used more on other things. But, mm. um, it's still, it's a long process. Uh, have you tried the upgrade system, Terry? Not yet. I uh, left all four of my R&D slots open today, though, to give some to actually get into the game and start to work on it because I've gotten gargantuan amounts of R&D stuff. Cool. So I think it's time that I actually start doing doing some things. I haven't, to be honest with you, I've been having a really great time on Kabbalah Prime just because, you know, Beth is and always has been completely backed for ground mm-hmm. combat. So I'm having a great time on Kobali Prime right now, even with Mark 12 here. Um, I haven't, I know some people are like, oh my God, it's so hard. I'm like, I don't understand why you're thinking it's so hard. I'm having the time of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like it's a challenge without it being so difficult that it's frustrating. And that's oh, I, cu- I couldn't take two or three steps without dying. <laughs> really? I'm oh, not yeah. actually kitted out for ground because I don't have a mouse. Um, I tend to stick with space because it's easier to use with a mouse pad and all my traits and everything else are all space and I didn't bother changing them but yet um, I, though I did die a fair amount compared to sort of normally yeah. still wasn't a huge amount well I think I was running it with uh, Mark 13 or, or early Mark 14 gear but um, yeah I, 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 I was just I'm not really and I have to say around, that my, cap- but... yeah, my captain the new, the new spec or trait level you know the little point that you get that you get to spend Mm -hmm. um she has four of them now right because she's level 54 i threw those directly into ground as well she's a commando Uh, so i went straight to commando um and terry's doing commando uh, beth is a commando i'll tell you she (laughs) yes she is yes she is (laughs) and i'm having like i said so i'm i'm that part of my frustration is that it's not it's not the the missions that have been a grind for me it's been the fact that i haven't been able to get to them but I'm I'm enjoying what missions and what content is on Kobali Prime when I can find them and get to them before they expire and what's, uh, what's with the bony point. hate in our chat room right now the what <laughs> bunny <laughs> hate oh because uh, that's why Chloe was barking oh I know uh, the bunnies oh my god yeah. those are so funny uh, well, may, maybe. Well, I, I can't really say that, but I was gonna. I was thinking maybe because the game knows that you're 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 awesome on the ground. That that's the reason why they're making you run, and the transporters are working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm more geared for space, and I have I've been spending all my points on um, the piloting side. I've done that. I love rock and roll. <laughs> and I've I've got it almost all maxed out. I'm almost maxed out on my piloting. So yeah, I've got two more to get on that. Yeah, yeah. I am. I haven't spent one point in piloting. It's all been commando, and I'm just like I'm having just a really really good time when I get to play something. But yesterday I almost threw something through my screen because I I thought I was close enough to get to uh, one of the missions up in the mountains, and I ran through the forest, and I and and the little thing popped up and said mission failed. I'm like. Argh. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering what I've done differently because so many people have said they've struggled to get to the levels but that's one thing I never did and it's not like I spent loads of times grinding on any uh, sort of ground what, mission yeah. or um, STFs because I think the entire time that I was leveling up through the episodes I probably ran four STFs and I did the mirror once each day so it wasn't like I was doing well I don't do anything. STFs you know that right yeah but as I said okay. usually I've, I tend to play quite a lot of the STFs but because I was concentrating on upgrading and things like oh, that I'd only played four of them yeah well that, maybe that maybe that's what's making up the difference for you right now is again I I do not play STFs strictly because my experience with them has been uh, less than positive and I, I would never probably Probably be able to play an STF on on advanced or elite now because I would end well, up being everybody. To be fair, the fleet partner. has offered to do the STFs with you. Who has the fleet? So you don't do any of the the the, the five and team content on PVQs. Only the Undine infiltration. That's an STF, and I it's love in that. The, one. It's in the same I, vein. I love that one. I and I play that one when I can. Um, but in the, anything that but I haven't done any of the the Deferi stuff. I, I haven't done to go any. Back and, and do I, that actually. I've got so many accolades I haven't got from the Deferi 
brand. <laughs> and mostly because I don't like I don't like the trash talk. I mean, I I get you know it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to start. It's hard to start. It's you're experiencing frustration because you're dealing with people who don't know how to who, who don't know how to play the specific mission. I would be one of those people. I would get in and I would go. I have no idea what I'm doing. Means to me if I the thing is you, if you ask for instance uh, most of these missions there's like a 30 second minute long time where you know a video plays and you, right. you they give you time to, to set things up if you asked and is, if i if i if i didn't know who you were and you you know this was your first time running it a you shouldn't be on advanced right okay, for one thing true. very true okay you should be on normal and right. secondly if you ask in the chat in in the the little chat window local or team mm-hmm. hey the first time running what do i do me personally and a few other people that i've come across it's like okay this is what you need to do or just follow me or something not everyone are total dicks but <laughs> yes there are there are people out there, there who are, are yeah, and that's why I'll, but, I'll generally do nstf like that the first time with a fleet yeah you know, for the first few times idea. run it with with the fleet or you know do do it on normal but ask see if there's anyone willing to help mm-hmm. teach you if not pick somebody and just follow them and, and here's my other downside and that is 90 percent of the people in this game are ex- and not unexpectedly back for space yeah right so so their ships can take a little bit more. Not only do I fly an escort, I'm specced for ground. So yeah, she's so already just, that she... much more glass camp, right? So I don't like to do space because, you know, she gets one shot. <laughs> well, I'm always but happy to you, run the great on it. I'd, be, I'd, I'd be great with you, in, in, which is why I do undine infiltration so much. Because I can, you know, Beth. I think you'll like the, the new she one. She does not tolerate BCZ 472. She does. I think you'll like the new one that comes out that, that okay. will unlock with dra- Dragons of the Sea. I think you'll like that one i i only ran it once so far but it um it's definitely one of those that i really that i if you like if you like the uh the undine you're gonna love this one so well very cool mike do we have announcements um i think we'll just reiterate some of the things that we talked about earlier um let's see gates of stovel core we released uh messages from the outback part or yeah part one um on our site um check it out uh we had a lot of fun i wrote the episode ross and i we directed ross edited it um so he did a, a great job uh so definitely check that out um message or messages from the outback part two is supposed to be out january 2nd between now and january 2nd episodes three and four of starfinder which i ross and i we wrote we directed and i edited um will be out every two weeks so not this friday but next friday and then two weeks later, episode four will come out. Um, so those are are done. Those will, will be released soon. They're fantastic. The whole Klingon arc that we're doing with Starfinder is fantastic. So you got to check that out. Um, if you want a sneak peek, an early peek of um, of episode three, uh, this Tuesday, J- DJ Jen over at S- uh, Subspace Radio, I think at starting at two o'clock, it's his uh, fourth anniversary with that SSR. He's going. He's going to be on the air for six hours. Wow. He, not only is he going to be playing message just from the Outback Part 1, but he's also going to uh, be playing Episode 3, which is a, a Part 1 of Gorn of a Different Color. Um, so if you want to hear it early, uh, be, uh, be there. Um, yeah, so uh, got to check that out. That's a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, that Episode 3 will be out, um, I want to say, on the on the 5th. Uh, let's see. So that's got that got Starfinder and Gates squared away. Um, I have a new website, certifiedpcdoctor.com. It's uh, an author page. I've got some stories posted. I have a making of on uh, for that episode. I'm gonna be posting some stuff as, as I go along, writing a few blogs, posting more stories. Um, so check that out. I'll links will be in the show notes. Um, also, our fundraiser is still ongoing, and um, to kind of show you what I've got in mind uh, you can go to gntshow.com slash gnt underscore test and uh, get a sneak peek of what we have in mind this is kind of where the money what 
it, it, from this point forward is going towards. Uh, lots of plugins, but you get a, a feel for how for what the website's going to look like, how it's going to work. Um, we've got a lot of the, the plugins installed and set up working as uh, like uh, in trial mode or whatever. Um, we even have a countdown cl uh, timer, countdown cl clock working again. Um, so uh, please check it out. Support us. Um, Grumpkin, are you Chooch? Are you George? He might be. Um, so that, 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 that's what I'm I thinking. Al or, or Ross, too. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> The Bye, animation. Brandon. Bye, Brandon. Bye. Yeah. Um, I think that's all, all I got for now. Um, I, I, I also feel like I'm forgetting I'm, something, but well, I'm I'm gonna pick up here and say for everybody, don't forget that uh, you can listen to some really great interviews that Nick took part in at the Thank Great you. Allentown Comic Con. There's uh, Gigi Edgley and who else? Uh, Nick, you did a few. Erica, Erica Schroeder. Yeah, she's and, a voiceover artist. Uh, who, who's very big in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon. Pokemon and she did Emma Frost on the uh, the Amazing X Men. Very cool, love that. That's really. I'm I'm just so excited about those. And don't forget, we also had a couple of really great supplemental logs. Most recently, with the uh, amazing, inspiring team from Enterprise in Space, which is a uh, nonprofit organization. By the way, everybody, tax deductible. Mm -hmm. That tells you it's this is not a Kickstarter. This is not an Indiegogo. This is a nonprofit organization that is looking to raise no lie 40 million dollars to put an eight foot satellite into orbit around earth for a few weeks or a couple at least a week and are setting up not just the ship design competition but also a um a experiment competition for kids between the ages of kindergarten all the way through to university level um, my so can do those, those my things. experiment uh, uh suggestion or proposal was denied I wanted to grow space potatoes, and the mission isn't long enough to grow space potatoes. So, and and, and what's Jess been discussing <laughs> with regards to Nano, my dear? What's up oh, with that? Uh, well, she she won Nano, and um, I kind of reached my fifty thousand word goal as well. So we we both won. Yay! Yay! Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Hold on. Um, and uh, what other supplemental log do we have with uh, uh, Scott Pearson, which was a week ago? And uh, of course, if you missed. It. If you were in the chat room and you missed it uh, at the beginning of the show, we had the lovely Una McCormick. That was phenomenal. Thank you again, Steve. Well done. Yes. Really Thank appreciate you. the effort. Ease it was well time. worth paying off your court costs for the restraining <laughs> 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 And there's a slee stack in our chat room. How lovely. And uh, there we go. I think that... Was that your slee stack sound? Yeah, no. Was... That's what they sounded like, dude. Come on. Did you just dude me? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> 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 and um, to our uh, to our audience, I would like to say for the for our U.S. listeners, <laughs> I, I have a please if you're traveling, yes. be safe on the roads or or whatever, and have a phenomenal Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, real quick, I know that we're running out of time here, but um, to our lovely social media manager Jespa, yes, we are so honored, so grateful to have you part of our team. No kidding, yeah. I know. You know. You know. Uh, we and love the uh, we know that you're work, looking for work. Um, we will be more than happy to provide you with uh, a good good reference. And um, we will. Yes, we will. We will. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully, we can entice you to continue helping the GNT show. Love you much. Have a great one, you guys. We'll see you. As far as I know, we're on for next week. Mike, do you have a Thanksgiving that's going to take you away from this? We do, but this is so early. Everyone's still asleep. So That's true. I'll be here. That's true. <laughs> so have a great one, you guys. We'll see you next week for episode 168. In the meantime, live long and prosper. Joe Lantru, bitches. Music for the GNT show is provided by Warp 11, Grethor, Five Year Mission, and Andrew Allen's Smooth Federation. GNT show is a busy little beaver production. Gonna take a five-year tour 